Welcome back to my beginner's guide to Soul Mask. We are harvesting a little bit of stone because my follower thinks I'm too weak and it doesn't really want to do things for me at the moment. So I need to improve upon my gear. I need to go hunt some stuff at some temples, potentially get some more followers. We'll see how that goes. Craft hopefully a better weapon and uh, get some hides of some beastie guys. Those are the plan. We may even do some upgrading of masks. We want to follow this quest thing along a bit more too to get some more XP. If you haven't seen the last episode we were building a bit of a hut explaining a bit of the follower situation and how to theoretically get them to do stuff for you. Although the higher power you are the more inclined they are to do stuff for you. So the more stuff you fight and more powerful you are essentially. The more willing they are to respond quickly to you. They will eventually do stuff just not at a very good rate at the moment. I'm also working on getting myself a bit of a weapon but I uh, want to get this ticked off first to see. So I have to craft more linen gear. I already have some but my follower actually needs some so we're gonna craft them some shoes. What do they actually have? They usually come with something and you can knock them out even if you don't want to keep them because you can only have a certain amount until you level up your mask. Some of the stuff we're going over in this episode. So if that sounds overwhelming, don't worry, we'll go into it in further detail a bit later on. But you can knock them out and just steal some of their gear off them because they often come with like things like soup and stuff. So that's handy. Or you can tame them and actually keep them. Then you need to make them basically everything because this stuff, unlike games like Conan, will disintegrate on them when they get attacked or if you get attacked. You can sometimes dismantle it for things like leather in your inventory. Some things actually require a bench to dismantle. But that's like well higher gear stuff, mostly metal. I achieved that little quest and I equipped some boots on my follower but I will be making some pants and some tops and some gloves and hopefully something comes out decent-ish or gonna be better than the crap he's wearing. And then I can dismantle that. I keep calling it a him and it's like clearly a she. And you can just drag it on or press E I believe when it's there. And a little quit. Then we can go along and press V, dismantle whatever you don't want. Because some of the stuff you can't actually repair either. This item cannot be repaired so basically it's pointless and when it breaks it'll completely disappear. Unlike your stuff it'll break and not disappear. Oh and I got a random heat mod off it which is a good way to get up some mods by getting a whole bunch of their armor off them. And some of the mods are very handy but can be kind of expensive and you can't make a lot of them until a bit later on anyway. I don't want to take all of these roast mushrooms out but I do want some of them because you can eat a few different foods at once to get a few different buffs. You can't eat say like two meat See how it says meat down there, buffs in a row and get both of them, but I can eat one meat and one fruit and vegetables and one. I don't have a staples there, but I have one in my actual quick slot that I can't see currently. So yeah, pressing S will split that and I can take some of them. That's just equipped it straight to my hotbar because I double clicked on it to withdraw it. I'm gonna take all of those. And you can also just eat like random fruits and they sometimes help you out but this one doesn't do anything particularly. I remember to constantly be checking that your campfire is not going to go out because again your stuff will decay. If you didn't watch that first episode I explain a lot of that in there and we discover some new things together because a bunch of stuff has changed since I last played the game so that's exciting. These guys will go around and repair stuff and add wood if you assign them etc. Another good reason to get yourself up an army. I'm going to attempt to craft myself and potentially the follow-up the weapons I don't know why I did too I could have just pressed craft all with F but it that is what it is uh, pretty decent with the green first roll we'll, we'll take that it doesn't look like a lot more but it is because it attacks way better they're both green I will still keep the spear with me though because that will be handy the throwing you can change your special moves as that under the more you use a certain weapon the more your mastery will improve and then you can unlock other stuff and change your specials and fun things we're gonna craft ourselves up some bandages because it's handy and it's part of the quests. Lots of things in this game will try to kill you and I'll reiterate that you want to try to get to the highest level of armor and preferably weapons before moving on from the very beginner noob area. It's not too hard. It will take you maybe an hour or two if you're not pottering about like me filming videos. I do plan to stay in this newbie area just a little bit longer than I usually would just to fully 
make sure you guys understand the beginning of the game because it's not a game that necessarily should be rushed. The leveling is definitely quite crazy. If you go to an area where you shouldn't be, you'll know about it so quickly. So yeah, don't try to rush anything too much in this game. It's a nice slow paced game. There's a lot of detail to it. Enjoy it. You may have noticed this flashing. If I click on that, it will show me other stuff that that's or has banned in it. Potential other crafting bench recipes also. Use one of those bandages just to achieve my quest. Now we go to the hunt. You can actually make some calcite rings because I happen to get lucky and get some calcite which is a rare drop. It'll do. They both say excellent. That will will I think change. I don't know why that one's a green excellence and one's a purple excellence. Then we have legendary and epic and fine regular. So if you go into your character menu you can actually unlock some of these proficiencies once you get to a certain level. Did go into that a little bit in that last video. You can have some harvesting speed, some harvesting output, some harvesting durability and some harvesting stamina cost. Harvesting output obviously is very handy. Harvesting speed can also be handy but I only get to choose one of these because I can't level up yet beyond this. So consider that for now. And then press space once you've selected the one you like. I'll take it off and then you'll get that bonus. But as they level up, they'll always constantly be giving little bits of bonuses here anyway. So by the time I'm like level 40, I'd have about 25% or more harvesting output just from leveling up. Now that you probably have a bed, hopefully you should have a bed. It's not very expensive and the carpenter's bench is one of those first things you should be making. You can sleep and get that well-rested buff that you see on the side of the screen. So the pleasant mood and the sweet home, that's going to give you some increased experience gain and that's going to help you level up. So you want to constantly maintain max level of morale as much as you can and the higher it is the less long you have to sleep. Try to sleep at night because it's dark and you might as well sleep at night or be crafting. And it's not quick. It eventually gets quicker because you get some perks but in the beginning game it's not that quick. So take your time to go do things and sleep while your AFK. Now when going on an adventure as well as setting thralls roots you can see over there I have a little marker that says tree. I can use that as a, as a direction for where I'm walking or I can set my follower to go harvest around there or whatever. But if I just want to like find a place and have a little bit of a marker I can press V and then that's going to be my shortcut marker and it's going to be a little bit different from everything else. As I'm looking around there he is and it's going to show me how far away it is and be quite different from all the other markers. You can get your follower to come with you or you can leave them here. I'm going to leave them here for now because I don't trust not getting them murdered and they're more handy to me not murdered for now because yeah. although they're not very helpful when you're uh, actually trying to tame more of them because they can accidentally sometimes kill the dude instead of taming them. Be careful. Let's run this way. If you press the I do believe the plus equals button you can auto run which is nice. Someone shack here. Once their shacks decay you can actually access their loot box bags most of the time. Got a couple of followers going on. Actually they've got one follower in themselves. I stand corrected. These loot boxes do respawn fairly regularly but people do also farm them fairly regularly. Oh it used to be dogs here but they've changed it to some tapirs. We've mixed it up a bit. We like that. These guys are going to drop some hides and some bone. You can also save their data. Rescue him. He probably shouldn't have passed out there silly guy. Just over here we hopefully will find a box with some green crystals in it which we will use to level up our mask at some point. And refresh our little this. Loot the box and see what we get. Usually pretty good. So these ones we use to refresh our mask energy, the Q button energy. And these ones we use to level up our mask and then some other random goodies sometimes. Press T and withdraw. Oh come back in like 15 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Would have loved to have got a little bit more bone but it does end up adding up. I got a decent amount of beads tied for now. It will get me by because I'll need it to craft the loom. I'm gonna need some rough leather made in the tanning bench which I already now the buffs didn't used to be limited to how many you could have but it may now be limited to only a certain amount. You may have to pick and choose. We'll see. You used to be able to stack a whole bunch of different types. 
I haven't got there yet. As I said, there have been a bunch of changes to the game and there may be a few more before release. Hopefully around June, July, which is pretty close. It's very exciting. A few little fixes here and there, but it's definitely coming along. You can keep an eye out for your bonfire marker to find your base again. Now we're going to go over here. You can assign a crafter and get them to not take the stuff out of the bench by clicking down here. Because if they are to craft the tanning fluid, which we're going to need to make a water skin, there are better containers later. You can make a jug, but we need clay for that. And you can make a bucket, which is the best, but we need copper wire for that. So for now, we will make water skins and then you make tanning fluid. If you don't get them to keep everything in the bench, they'll put it in a random box or their inventory. Inventory is not as bad as a random box because as soon as they go to make the leather that needs the tanning fluid, they're going to have to go back to the box and they'll, we'll see, a little bit of that could have changed. Again, it's been a little while since I've played, so we'll see. Either click down here or press P to assign a caregiver. I only have this one, but you can see what they are best at. His leather working isn't amazing, but it's not the guy I got. So we'll assign them. If I am to press D, I can then get them to craft a certain amount of something. And they'll craft all of that until they're done. And they'll go fetch it from boxes and stuff. If it's in your inventory, it'll stay idle, but I'm going to get most of that out. I need some of it still for my water skin. Um, then add that in. He'll get to doing things, in theory. Yeah, there we go. Now, ideally, this is not a great spot. It's not a terrible spot, but it's a bit lacking in some resources that are pretty heavy. And a good starting spot is usually up here because there's a lot of clay that you can get and it's fairly safe and you're kind of near a couple of thrall camps, follower camp, barbarian camps, that one. There's another tape here. Let's kill him. They're so scary. I always think they're panthers. Again, you can just press Q and see what's actually about and handy. And you can save their data. Usually, there we go. Get my hunting score. Decent chunks of stuff for this one. You can get some capybaras and have them in a pen later so you can get a meat sauce and stuff from just breeding them. Same with the turkeys. You get a lot of poop which you need for compost. So living by certain follower camps, barbarian camps, will yield a bunch of that stuff too. I want to get too far away. There's people's stuff everywhere. No, there was a well. Okay, I got too far. Too fast. Too well. Yeah, didn't get very far very fast at all. Probably uh, move that to a more convenient slot. My microphone is directly in front of my keyboard so if you can hear some tapping that's why. These have a lot less durability than they used to, but they also decay really slowly. If you'll need that. Oh, here's the well I was looking for. Yay, experience. Also have to craft a thatch foundation, of course. One rope. Don't think that's going to be enough. Not crazy. I got enough of base though. Located under the other tab, we can find the water bottle. We're going to want to craft one of those for now because I only have enough fiber for one. Let's craft some more, <laughs> gather some more fiber. I actually want a few more so I can make some of that tanning fluid because it does not go very far. As that's a convenient well. Also, it doesn't hurt to put one on your actual follower. They will drink it. But you can manually feed it to them. If you yourself have a well, they will come and drink out of it. Could have built a bit closer and they probably would have come and drunk out of this one. I fully thought my base, uh, never mind. That was trippy. So you simply have to click on a water source with a water bottle in your inventory and it will fill like so. I'm going to make a few of those because they're going to come in hand. Whoa, maybe not that many. They'll do. I need to get more hide first. Fill them up and make your way back home. You may have to go a bit further to a different water source, but again, that's why it's a little bit handy handy to be built by a water source unless you have lots of tribe mates and they can get stuff smashed out. So you start getting all the followers, it's way easier. You do have to spend a little bit of time micromanaging as you may have seen in that first episode. I'll go into that a lot more when we get more followers. So you can definitely um see that in greater detail. It takes it takes a little bit of micromanaging. <laughs> Once it's done, well worth it. Most OP crafting ever. So when crafting, you can select what you want crafted and what you don't want crafted. I don't want it to ever use pelt or deer skin. If I am to move this bench, I'll have to reset that. But for now, that's a thing. I can place these in there or it will automatically pull them out of my inventory and place them in there if it's in my inventory. Again, pressing D is going to get the follower to do it. Or you can press F and they'll craft the amount that's available to be crafted. I then need the rough leather. I can leave this bench and get them to do it, but 
might as well do this because I can craft this in my inventory. Go here and we're going to try and make a loom potentially. No, we're not just kidding. Left my planks over there. So I can simply leave the crafting rack by pressing R. They may start doing it. They are going to do it, but I can always kick them off again. Pick up my planks. I can press S and get out a select a mount. I'll get out that many. Now we're going to craft ourselves that loom. Crafted me the thatch foundation. I should have more than just one random deadly box that did not get full of wood. You gotta constantly make sure that they don't put stuff you like in here, but you can set the wood type down here. Now I'm inside the loom. This one is even more important because you can use rough leather or leather. And as you use rough leather to make leather with tanning fluid, that doesn't work out well in beginning game. So make sure you turn that off or you'll be sad when your thralls just, your followers start using up all your rough leather, I mean your regular leather. So while you're crafting stuff, you can go into your inventory and look at certain things. I'm going to press T and use some of those crystals because we can't capture more followers until we learn some of this stuff. So these are all teleporters. We want these things. It's good to go through and have a little bit of a read because you will be limited for a time of what you can upgrade. You'll eventually be able to get most of it pretty quickly, but you'll be limited to how many crystals you can farm. So it is pretty beneficial to be living this close to one of those little temples. The place I want to build is surrounded by a couple of little temples and it's quite easy to do a little loop. Plus it's near a barracks that has a farm. So I can go there and get a whole bunch of food really easily, or at least the stuff to make the food and feed the capybaras and the alpacas and etc. Now it's a pretty good idea to try and work your way up to quality assessment because that'll enable you to actually see what those barbarians are before you even bother trying to deter them, tame them. Things like energy units going to give you extra storage because you'd end up using a fair chunk of it. Eventually we can actually um, take control of them, but we got to do a few things first. So we won't be able to unlock certain stuff. Yeah, some pretty cool stuff. We get a whole bunch of growth rate stuff, which can be good to work on, depending on what you want to have advanced quickest. Fighting, obviously, you just have to unlock. So to gain access to this one, as I may or may not get there in this series, Hopefully I will. It's not the biggest beginner series ever. I will be tracking up a little map of where it is, but essentially to get there, to unlock that, being able to take control of your barbarian. It's about here. There's a teleporter. Once it's unlocked, you can teleport to other ones when you find them. They're all about. The map is quite large. Now while I'm crafting stuff, I can go to my followers list and make sure that they are actually doing stuff because they're not. So I can copy this with C and they'll continue doing it until they break their tools or they actually get some log. That'd be cool. A lot that. But what I'm actually going to get them to do is place the logs in our carpenter's table. I'm going to confirm that with any luck they'll actually find some logs. We'll see, they're less successful than I. You can also go to their character and see what type of proficiencies they have. And when they level up, you can also add stuff just like your character. See a couple of the different perks. So where are we? They haven't quite leveled up, but eventually we can get them to get more logs and all of that. Hopefully when I come back for the next episode, I'll have a little bit more resources going. I'll go on a bit more of an adventure because we're going to need some clay. Clay is super important because we need it for a bunch of ventures and a bunch of stuff. If we were cooking things, they now give you a couple of broths. We're going to need more broths. It's a liquid food. You need liquid food to tame the followers. And I want an army of followers to get me even more things. Although it is advisable to get them closer to the base location that you want them at as possible because you can only have one follow you at a time and you can carry one but their weight with all of their things and your weight is considered so you'll walk really slow later we'll have llamas and you can put them on the llama you cannot put them on an alpaca but alpacas are pretty cool just to get around with some more weight distribution but we'll go into that in some of those later episodes but they they'll be pretty coming up soon because i want to go tame thralls followers can't stop saying that 
this game's better than Conan, just saying. And um, I want some alpacas so I can go get some metal and um, actually advance. So we'll be doing that at least in the next episode or two. We might even start a bit of a farm, get ourselves up some capybaras and some turkeys because we're going to need some food. Although I can always, like I said, raid that barbarian barracks over here. But if we go to some of these scout camps, I can actually get this fog of war gone too. And that's pretty priority. So we may even be doing that first up because I need to go to this area to scout and if I can build over there potentially. There's a couple of nice little camps and temples for the raiding about and nothing too crazy. A couple of crocodiles, but they're easy enough to avoid and kill. Everything else is super crazy. Or we might end up building up by that end of the lake as lots of clay and really nothing crazy. In between here and there, bunch of crazy but you can follow the water. We'll see how we go. If you found this information informative, smash that like button. If you're not already, consider subscribing. Stick around for the next episode. Hopefully you'll learn a bunch about the game. If you're not already playing the playtest, it's still out for a little bit and the game itself will be out hopefully in a month or two. So, no, so until next time, I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, wherever you may be.